Though the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, a private sector leadership, thought leadership organization, has stated food importation threatens Nigeria's national security. Nigeria spends billions of dollars annually importing a wide range of food items, and Esther Gudaga caught up with Nigeria's Agriculture Minister Akimumi Adeshino at the 19th Economic Summit Group meeting in Abuja today to discuss Nigeria's priorities with respect to agriculture. Let's take a look. Well, obviously, I'm very excited. Uh, in the 20 years of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, they've always focused on macroeconomic policy issues and fiscal issues. But well, this year, they decided that they wanted to focus on one sector, and they pick agriculture sector, and for good reason. Agriculture contributes in this country 70% of all employment, over 44% of the GDP of the country. It is a sector in which Nigeria has huge potential to be a global player in. We've got the land, we've got great sunshine, we've got a cheap labor, uh, we've got a very active uh, agribusiness community and finance sector to go behind it. But we've taken that agriculture in a different way today. It's no longer a development activity. That agriculture is a, it's a business for us. We want to be a global player in the agricultural food markets. And so this summit is setting the bar that we are ready to play big in the sector. Later statistics have shown that Nigeria's population by the year 2050 will exceed that of the U.S., somewhere around 440 million people. Do we have any assurances that this transformation agenda can guarantee food security by then? Well, you know, the thing is that we've got a population right now, 167 million people that we have to feed, talk less of those that we have to feed in the future. We are a huge population, but we're using that population for a long time, buying the food from other countries. And so as you do that, you make it difficult for yourself to produce and meet your own needs. So what we've decided to do is when it comes to rice, for example, we're going to be rice self-sufficient. We're working hard to do that by 2015. That means that we can save ourselves roughly 365 billion naira that we currently use importing rice. We can unlock jobs for all people all across this country in the rice growing areas. Take, for example, the issue of wheat. You know, if we're spending 635 billion naira importing wheat, that means that we're just simply making the farmers of other countries very happy and their people all employed in rural areas working. If we continue that trajectory, where will the money be for us to invest in roads, in irrigation, uh, in storage facilities? So we decided that we are going to be self, at least cut back our wheat supply by about 50% by 2015. We've released today two new varieties of wheat that give us five to six tons per hectare. That's 500 to 600 percent what farmers growing wheat in Nigeria were getting before. And we expect that we will cultivate about 450,000 hectares of those by 2015. That would mean we can produce about 2.1, 2.2 million metric tons of wheat. That will reduce our wheat import. Right now, which is about 4.2 million by half just by that time. We are introducing other new technologies into the country. First and foremost, we have to reduce post-harvest losses. We lose about 45% of what we're producing. So even if you don't produce more, and you're just simply reducing your losses, you'll be fine. So we are investing heavily right now in warehouses, modern warehouses, in storage facilities that will reduce uh, the losses that we have. And finally, is the fact that we must add value to everything that we are producing. For us to feed our population, whether it is rice, whether it is cassava, whether it is maize, we've got to add value to it. Our industries have to use these things as our raw materials to produce finished products. And so as we look forward to the future, I think people got excited, I mean, sometimes worry too much about rapid population growth. But as the president explained today, science, the power of science, to develop new technologies and to break new frontiers, you can't pull those out. Many people in the 1970s caught out India. They said there was no future for India because of the rapid growth in population. They forgot something, the power of agricultural technology. So but as you increase new technologies to farmers, the access of farmers to it, the farmers' yields will go up. I think we'll be well able to feed ourselves, but not by food from others, from food we grow by ourselves. On the issue of feeding the nation, food security, the cassava policy is one that the government takes very seriously. Now in terms of feeding the nation going forward, how strategic is this cassava policy? You know, we're the largest producer of cassava in the world. And cassava can be used for so many things. You can use cassava for dry chips. You can use cassava for ethanol. You can use cassava for starch. You can use cassava for sweetness. And most importantly, you can use cassava for high quality cassava flour to replace some of the wheat 
flour that we're currently importing. We launched two years ago, and that is President, a very serious effort to create a structural shift in the wheat utilization patterns in this country. Because our current import of wheat is not one that we can sustain. There's no way in the world we can sustain that. And so we decided that, look, we're going to use 20% of wheat of cassava flour in making bread, up to 70% in confectionaries, you know. Just achieving 20% utilization of cassava flour in bread, that will save us 127 billion naira. That's money going to the pockets of our farmers, reviving our rural areas, and it's working. When we started, people were not used to cassava bread. I, you know, uh, you were telling me before the interview that uh, you had the cassava bread downstairs and nobody actually told you, you wouldn't have known. It is tastier, it is healthier, it is cheaper. A 800 gram loaf of it costs 200 naira, and the equivalent that's wheat flour costs 270 naira. So not only is it healthier, better bread, it's actually cheaper bread. And what I actually feel so excited about is that we are using what we are the largest producer of in the world, in our food chain. That means we want to become not only the largest producer of cassava in the world, we want to become the largest processor of cassava in the world.